Center on the campus of Underline University for tonight's OAC basketball game featuring the Blue Streaks of John Carroll University and the Cardinals of Underline. <laughs> At this time, if you are able, please stand and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem performed by the Underline Pep Band under the direction of Jordi Villanova. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to the Rike Center in Westerville, Ohio. This is Chance Burke alongside Kale Dennis. We're about to get underway with the matchup between the Otterbein Cardinals and the number one ranked John Carroll Blue Streaks. And in the OAC alone, this is number three versus number one. Jack Clement didn't play in the first matchup. Playoff seating is on the line and Cupid Spirit is in the air. Do you think we have an upset on our hands? You know, Otterbein, they have not lost at home in a month since dating back to that Mountain Union loss. Uh, Otterbein coming off of two big wins last week against Marietta and Muskingum. And John Carroll clinched the OAC regular season last week. You got to think they might be coming off of a hangover. Otterbein motivation is running high right now. They're thinking they got the number one team in their house. Why not protect it? Someone is stirring the pot today here in the Reich Center. Yes, amen to that, and a magical night brewing here at the Reich Center. Otterbein ready for a chance at the number one seed in the country, the Blue Streaks, and they've been hot all season. And yeah, they got two guys in Luke Chichone and Luke Frazier who are both averaging over 18 plus points a game, third and fourth in the conference in points per game. They average 86, first in the conference, I mean, they're just a scoring machine. And I mean, Otterbein just can't let it get to them because they're going to make some tough shots. You're going to see today, they're going to make some shots that you think you can't even make in your driveway wide open. Yeah, but right, these, right you are. Yeah, I mean, these guys are unbelievable when it comes to handling the rock and playing as a team. So Otterbein just can't let their composure get down. You know, they're going to get on some runs, but it's important to keep spirits high, keep that motor running against a team like John Carroll. Yeah, great keys from Kale there as we get into the starters here for John Carroll. Number zero, Luke Chacon. Number three, Jerry Higgins the third. Number five, Luke Frazier. Number 11, Luke Eller. And number 20, Henry Rayner. And the starters for the home team, the Otterbein Cardinals. Number two, Jack Clement. Number five, Cam Evans. Number 13, Julian Heckman. Number 20, Troy Scowden. And number 24, Chase Garrido. As both teams meet in the middle of the court as we get ready for this jump ball. Start this game on a cold Valentine's Day, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, Patsutani Phil got us for a week, and then he said, nah, I was lying. We're going, we're going back to 30 degrees here in Ohio. Yeah, thankful basketball is an indoor sport here as John Carroll commands the jump ball. Going to have first shot here at offense. And here's Jacone with the ball. It's been a great score for John Carroll all season. Likely see him throw up some shots and create some offense here today. Now good move 
Creates an open shot, but going to be no good. Rebound, Garrido. And Otterbein now a chance to take an early lead here. Heckman with the ball. Looking for Scouting inside. Nothing going. Going to reset it here with Garrido. And now here's Clement. Didn't play in the first matchup. And a big factor on both sides of the ball for Otterbein as he's going to create a travel. Almost kept the footwork. They're going to be called there. And back-to-back -back empty possessions to start this game. Yeah, Luke Frazier just so long as a guard, 6'7". I mean, he's going to be tough to go get some, generate some offense against. As you can see right there, just uses his long frame uh, to play some great defense there on one of the top scorers, Jack Clement. Good ball movement. Almost had an open three, but good defense by the Cardinals. And a contested three there is going to be no good. And Luca Eller going to be called on the foul as Otterbein is going to retake possession here. And now it seems the blue streaks coming with a little pressure. Trying to force Otterbein to cough up some turnovers as Evans guarded by Chacon. And Evans didn't have the best game last game. But starting off right here, may lay up Cam Evans on the assist from Julian Heckman and Otterbein with an early lead. Picking up where he left off from the Muskingum game, using his big body down low to get some big boy point guard points down low. Now here's Maynard up against Scouten. And good defense by the Cardinals so far. And it, their streak is going to continue there with the block down low. And now a chance to extend their lead. And Clement driving in. And what a pass to Evans on the wing. And Evans cleans it up. Student section on their feet. Cam Evans from behind the arc. That was acrobatic right there. Remind me a little bit of Jason Williams' white chocolate throw in that thing. That was beautiful. Don't know how he got that pass off, but it creates an open three. And Otterbein now up five as Maynard trying to back up Scouten. And he does. Our score now 5-2 off a nice move down low from Henry Rayner. Six foot seven junior from Lakewood. And now here's Heckman. Back over to Evans. Evans has all five points so far for the Cardinals. Now a pick and roll with Garrido. And now Heckman, five on the shot clock. Good pass down low to Garrido. And another easy basket for the Cardinals. That was just a beautiful set screen by Scouten right there. Frazier didn't even see it coming. It was late there. And that caught him off guard in the easy pick and roll for two. Julian Heckman picking up the assist once again. And now a missed shot by Luke Chacon. Going to result in another Otterbein offensive possession. And Air Clement right there jumping from the free throw line and getting the tough finish. And Otterbein up 9-2 to as John Carroll's going to call their first time out of the game. Dude, it's, he, he was, he's been flying in these past four minutes making acrobatic passes, floating in the air for like, seems like five seconds, getting those two points. And Otterbein's on a great roll right now, playing some great defense down low and along the perimeter. And I mean, it's transitioning into points and this is what exactly what they need. Yeah, if you're coach winners, loving what you're seeing so far. Early lead up seven, just gotta hold on to it. Yeah, you know, John Carroll's gonna come and get on some runs here and there. But if you keep playing like this, you're going to have a good chance at the end of this game. Now both teams exiting the timeout. It'll be John Carroll basketball. And here's Chacon, 0 for 1 in the game so far. One of the Blue Streak's best scorers. And he's going to find an open teammate, top of the key. Three is going to be no good. And rebound to Clement. 
And the John Carroll offensive struggles continue. But making up for it on defense with a block there. And now Chacon back the other way. It's going to get it back and reset the offense. And now Clement guarding Frazier. And a good move inside by Frazier and an easy two points. He's going to find multiple ways to get to the basket and be able to create a shot. Ottomine is just going to have to do a much, much better job trying to defend him there on the ball screen. Yeah, what you wanted to do if you're John Carroll coming out of the timeout. But now got to stop Otterbein here as Troy Scouten backing up Maynard. And Scouten giving Maynard a taste of his own medicine and two points over the top. He was just playing a little bit off right there. It gave just enough separation for Scouten for the two. And now a turnover by Chacon. Going to lead to a Cam Evans layup. And once again, Julian Heckman with the steal and the assist on the other end. The transition game just working perfectly for Otterbein right now. Getting those easy buckets, which they need. And now inside to Maynard over the top. And an easy two points on the backside. And coming out of the timeout back and forth so far. And now Cam Evans. Had a great game so far. And now here's Garrido, guarded tightly at the top of the key. And now Clement with 10 on the shot clock. Got to move with a little sense of urgency. And he's going to cough up a turnover here. And Frazier on the other end is going to get a tough basket to fall. And just like that, 13-8 or a score. And John Carroll has it within two possessions. Yeah, I mean, John Carroll, just like Otterbein was doing, uh, John Carroll's going to be scoring at will here. And just like they did that, I mean, they cut the lead down to five here. I mean, that's what they do best. And a made three in the corner from Heckman. And Heckman getting it done on basically every level so far. And now Otterbein got to lean on their defense to get a stop. And here's Chacon, his shot gonna be no good. Rebound Maynard, and Maynard gonna have it stripped by Scouten. Now Clement gonna slow it down here for the Cardinals. But exactly the defensive possession you needed if you're Otterbein, and now a chance to take advantage. And Cam Evans, Taking advantage and earning two shots here at the charity stripe. And a chance to make it a double-digit game. Yeah, Otterbein down there on the defensive end is just doing a really good job controlling the low blocks, getting those scrappy rebounds that John Carroll is trying to get for those offensive boards. And, I mean, it's just transitioning the points right here. This is one of the main reasons they're up right now is that they're taking those good shots and they're finding the man open and they're making the easy buckets. And that's why they're up by nine right now. Couple of substitutions here for the Cardinals as Alex Hanna and Brock Waits check in. And Cam Evans, two for two at the line there and now up 10. And a couple of substitutions here for John Carroll as well. And a missed shot, going to be rebounded by Hannah. And another empty possession here for the Blue Streaks. Now here's Waits over to Clement. Clement going to drive, had his defender beat. Tough shot's going to be no good. And now Blue Streak possession is Chacon. Good move, shot's gonna be no good. And then they say last touch by Waits as he knocked it out of bounds. It's gonna be John Carroll basketball on the baseline. Yeah, Chichon, Chichon on a little bit of a cold streak to start the game, 0 for 3 from the field. I see that changing soon here as he won't be cold for long. Now a beautiful 
Backup move there by David Gentry. Gonna result in two free throws here. Here's Gentry's first attempt. And it falls. And eight minutes into this game, and if he told anybody that Otterbein would be up by nine, I'm, I'm sure they'd be shocked. Yeah, I think they would too. But I mean, Valentine's Day, love's in, love's in the air right now, and I mean, Otterbein would love a win right here, so I mean, that's probably why they're playing so hard. Now, MJ Davis in the game for Otterbein, and he's gonna find Evans on the side, trying to beat this full court trap here by the Blue Streaks, and they do, and they find Hannah down low, and a bit of a penguin slide out of the foul there, and a trip to the free throw line for Alex Hanna. Yeah, that was a, just a great press breaker right there by MJ Davis, getting the ball, putting it down, and Alex Hanna ripping it to the baseline, and going up strong with it too, not faltering, and got a slap on the wrist, and he got two at the line. He misses the first one. Usually a shot that he makes, one of Otterbein's best shooters. Doesn't get it to fall there. And now the second attempt is gonna be good. So one for two at the line there. And back up to a nine point game. And now looking back inside, here's John Carroll. And a good reverse is gonna roll in. And another two points here for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, just a great move inside. Spun baseline and just got him on his back and just a sweet touch at the end to bring within seven. Now Otterbein beats the count, gets it across half. Now here's Waits, finds Evans. Now Evans driving in, finds Hannah in the corner. Hannah for three and it's good. Alex Hannah from behind the arc. And that's where he loves to be. I mean, one of the best shooters behind the arc in the OAC. I mean, he's showcasing it right there. Do not get that guy hot beyond the three-point line or he'll kill you all game. Now four substitutions here as just Hannah is gonna stay on the court for the Cardinals and Jared Krieger getting his first minutes here in this matchup. And Clement alongside Skalden and Heckman also checking in for Otterbein. And now here's Chacon. Gets a screen, but good, good recovery by Scouten. And now back on his man as Clement is gonna defend that about as well as you can. And a foul on this end is gonna result in Otterbein basketball. And Clement, the perfect switch off of that screen there. And I'm not even sure if the shooter could even see the basket. No, and the thing about Frazier is he'll make that like nine out of 10 times. I mean, he's just a great pure shooter. And I mean, that's as best as defense as you can get right there. And it did a great job. They're gonna need that all game from him. Now here's Heckman over to Hannah. He just came off of the corner three. And now Scouten out to Clement and 10 on the shot clock. So we gotta get something going quick and a deep three here from Clement is gonna be good. And oh my gosh. I think he shot that from John Carroll's court. Yeah, he hit that thing from State Street. <laughs> that, thing, that was a shot of beauty right there. Throwing the rock up and first points of the game for him too. Uh, I hope he starts to feel himself now. I mean, why not hitting it? from way outside there. Now a big momentum play here 
And Chacon not going to take advantage of answering back, but takes advantage on the other end, getting the steal. And Chacon all the way on the other end and coast to coast for the easy layup. Yeah, missed the three, but I mean, he makes up for it on defense, getting the steal. And Otterbein crowd a little less noisy now after that bucket. Now here's Heckman. He's had a pretty solid game. And now a foul on a tool as he's going to get checked out here for Higgins, the third. And it'll be Otterbein possession here on the far side. And Clement gets it into Scouten. And now Clement here to set up the offense. Now here's Heckman trying to find Scouten inside, and he does. And now Scouten, a chance to back up his defender. And he does, gets the shot to go as well. And a little bit of a dream shake there, a little Hakeem Olajuwon action as Troy Scouten gets the easy bucket. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. You know, Troy Scouten known for getting the little baby hook in the middle, but just puts up a beautiful reverse spin from the post for the two. Otterbein Tuna section loving it. And Chacon answers back with another layup here. And now defending Heckman. And now Chacon gonna be picked up here on the reach in. And Garrido checking in here for Alex Hanna. And Cam Evans also coming back in for Jared Krieger. So now the starting lineup back out for Otterbein. And possibly a chance to take advantage here. Coming off the rest for Evans, who's had a monster game up to this point. Yeah, I mean, I think all of the Otterbein guys have had, like right there, have had a great game. Either dishing the ball, shooting, defending. I mean, they look great right now as a unit. And they go up by 13 in this first half. This They've been awesome so far. Yeah, up by 13. And we talked about it in the OAC alone. Otterbein number three and John Carroll, the number one team. And out of context, you would think that Otterbein's the number one team as how they're playing tonight. And yeah, I mean, they've just been looking great overall. And I mean, as John Carroll, you know, as a number one team in any sport, in any across the country, you don't want to get lackadaisical against opponents that you know you can beat. You know that you're better than. I'm not saying Otterbein can't compete with them, but I mean, when you're the number one team in the nation, you got to act like it. And right now, it looks like they're just kind of going through the motions. But I think at some point in the game, they're going to go on a run and they're going to make up for it. This might just be a slow start for them. Yeah, we'll see if the timeout can create some momentum here for the Blue Streaks. And really, the biggest issue has been getting the shots to fall. So we'll see if they can warm up to the rim. Here is Higgins. He's gonna find an open man in Eller, and Eller hits the open three. And a perfect start here coming out of the timeout for John Carroll. Bringing it back down to a 10 point game. Yeah, just what they needed out of the break to get themselves going again. Now here's Evans, finds Heckman. Heckman looking inside, finds Garrido in the short corner. And now back out to Evans, seven on the shot clock. And Evans gonna be fouled hard. Had to take an awkward shot with the shot clock winding down and hoping he's okay. Had a hard fall, kind of holding his back right now. And they're gonna call that foul on Frazier to his first of the game as Cam Evans trying to walk off any pain that he suffered there during the collision. Yeah, I mean, John Carroll's already got six fouls right now, and so one more 
could be even more beneficial for Otterbein here to just put on some, tack on some easy points in the later half, later half of this first half. Yeah, one away from the bonus, and that would at this point be detrimental to send the Cardinals to the charity strike for free as Cam Evans goes two for two there. So got to play conservative, but Otterbein likely see a lot of drives trying to get that seventh foul on their next offensive possession. And now here's another pull up here, this time by Frazier. And a good rise up shot and gets it to fall this time. Yeah, he's just got a small defender, uh, Clement on him. I mean, that pull up is probably gonna be there most of the time, so a very high percentage shot by Frazier. Now here's Evans. And now Clement here on the near side, gonna drive in, double teamed out to Garrido. And now from way outside, Evans shot gonna be no good. And rebound goes to Eller. Now here's Higgins, finds Rayner. And now Higgins gonna take a contested shot and doesn't get it to fall, but gets his own rebound. But they're gonna say it was last touch by Higgins. So Otterbein gonna take advantage there. And it looks like he had the offensive rebound, but little poke of the ball gonna cost him a possession there. And Otterbein taking back over. Yeah, Otterbein's just gotta clean it up a little bit more on the defensive rebound side of things. Can't let John Carroll get so many second chance points and easy points that is. You gotta make them work uh, for everything they got. Now here's Scouting. As he drives in and finds an open man. That shot's gonna be no good. Rebound Heckman. Garrido tried to get the three pointer to fall but now backing in. Finds MJ Davis at the top of the key. Good pump fake. And MJ Davis drives in, flying between two defenders, and gets it to go at the rim. And how about that for an off the bench scoring performance? I mean, you think he's gonna shoot the three. I mean, he's so wide open, why wouldn't he take it? But a great bait, great pump fake. And for the tough layup too, why add it? There's Eller answering back with the short corner jumper. And it seems the score wants to stay at 10 here. 33-23 with 5-10 left to go in this first half. And Clement trying to find something. And he gets it to Heckman. Good dribble move and almost finds Scouting inside. Going to be tipped out of bounds by Eller. And now some substitutions for both teams as Hannah and Waits check in. It'll be Otterbein ball on the baseline. And you can see the student section behind Waits right now as he calls a timeout. Student section's ready and they're hyped for that. Oh yeah, they for are. For that upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at them. All, da all down there, got the baseball guys, the football guys. Can't wait until John Carroll has to take it out under that basket. You know they're gonna be rowdy down there. But yeah, up a lot, by of, lot of trash talk. Oh yeah, of course. Up by 10, two, I mean, you, you know they're gonna be saying some funky things down there. And a short time out here as Waits couldn't find anybody to get the ball in, didn't want the five second count. So Otterbein will take back over on the baseline once again. And really for both teams in the past couple of minutes, everything has been going right on the offensive side. So we'll see if this timeout shakes anything up. As Hannah is gonna be called for the travel and not the ideal start coming out of a timeout and almost feel like a double wasted opportunity there. I was just about to say, I mean, it just feels like 
no use for the timeout there. I mean, if you look in the future and you saw you were going to get a turnover either way, I wouldn't even be taking the timeout. And now here's Chacon, a good move, loses the defender, and an easy layup on the left side. And our lead now at eight here with four and a half left to go in this first half. And here's Clement, who hasn't had the biggest game scoring, but has set up and created a lot of points for his team. And Waits here from way outside is going to be no good. And now here's Chacon trying to run the fast break, trying to use the speed, and he does behind the back pass. And Gentry cleaning it up, and Chacon, a beautiful dish under the basket. He's, he's leading this uh, momentum boost for John Carroll right now. He's like a little jackrabbit on the court right now, just flying up and down that thing. And the behind the back pass, beautiful. Yeah, he got some style points there. As Clement's shot's gonna be no good. And a bit of a scoring drought here for Otterbein. Only up by six, don't wanna give up too much as Chacon makes another unbelievable pass there behind his head. He's got eyes in the back of his head, man. And now here's Frazier. And a beautiful move over Davis. And I don't know if Davis could have did it any better. Yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do right there. And I mean, John Carroll is going on one of the runs that said that was going to happen. And Otterbein is just going to have to do something about it like they did right here. Yeah, Jack Clement coming up clutch here. Extending the lead back out to six. But on the other end, shot's going to be no good. Good rebound by Davis. Thought it was going in. And Davis comes up with a very, very crucial defensive rebound, trying to kill as much momentum as he can. And that's a big way to do it right there. Step back jumper by Clement. And it looks like he's coming into his element. I mean, it's what we've said all season. If you know what we've been saying, that's his bread and butter right there. He's going to make that almost all the times he's on the floor. And another missed shot here by John Carroll. Now here's Clement bringing down the ball. He's on a 4-0 scoring run by himself. And unable to get that one to fall. And Chacon here on the other end. An acrobatic finish as he stays hot. And I'm not sure what Otterbein needs to do to adjust. But you got to do it fast. Yeah, there's just he was just, he's just an artist down there with the ball, doing what he can with it, and they bring it in with six. And Otterbein's gonna have to do some answering here. Now here's Clement, guarded by Frazier. Now over to Waits, Hannah in the corner. It's his hot spot this time. Gonna be no good. Davis almost comes up with the rebound. Good hustle nonetheless. But an open layup here on the other end is going to make this a four-point game. Yeah, I just can't get lackadaisical when they're coming down the floor like that. you got to pick up somebody. And right there, and now you can see John Carroll's bench is getting up. They're feeling it right now. Crucial possession here for Otterbein. And Clement going to drive in, gets the left hand on the right side, and beats two defenders as Jack Clement continues to create momentum here for Otterbein. Yeah, used his speed. I mean, you call it just showing a jackrabbit. I mean, that's just his counterpart right there. And a counterattack here by Frazier as he hits it from way outside with that beautiful left-handed jump shot. Reminded me of James Harden. Yeah, I got a little bit. Chris Mullen is what I see a little bit in him. I mean, just maestroed that thing into the bucket. It's an old head pick there. That's a little throwback, isn't it? Now here's Clement, good move on his defender, and his floater is gonna be no good. And they say a foul here on Hannah with 15.8 left to go in this first half. And a big group substitution here for the Cardinals here in this last 15 seconds. 
And this is a big, big possession for Otterbein, too. I mean, a stop, you know, it gives you something to look forward to going into the break. But, I mean, a bucket here gives John Carroll almost all the momentum. And Otterbein, even though it might be tied, will have a, some holes to fill. And five here on the shot. Game clock, and Chacon's going to be fouled. And with a lot of fouls to give, really not the worst thing you could do there. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if they foul again here yeah. and basically eliminate them getting a shot off. Don't want to foul on the shot, though, and possibly give up three free throws. <laughs> and now Otterbein. After a good defensive effort there, going into half with a three-point lead. And really, all you could ask going against the number one team in the country. But a lot of stuff you need to fix to really dominate this game going into the second half. But a lot of good things on both sides of the ball here early for the Cardinals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Otterbein shooting a great 62% from the field, doing their thing, shooting the ball well. Just got to fix some things on the defensive side. Obviously, as you've seen, John Carroll can hit some shots that you wouldn't even believe. But just keep your composure, and hopefully things work out in the end. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how both teams come in after the break. But yeah, like you said, a great game from both teams, and it'll, it'll definitely come down to the last minutes, it seems. So it'll be a great game coming back here in the second half as we're going to take our first break here. Chance Burke and Kale Dent reporting live for Home of the Cardinals on BoxCast TV. What if one day you went to your secret hiding place and instead of what you came for, you found this? What would you do? The truth is, all drug use comes with risk. Before drugs take their toll on you and your family, know that there is help. You can quit. If you or someone you love is struggling with drug use, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, or go to samhsa.gov slash know the risks. has made me who I am because it's helped me to really find myself. Otterbein has given me lots of opportunities to kind of flourish. The Otterbein experience worth it for me is how personalized the classes are and everything and how much of a connection I have with all my professors. Knowing your community and like being involved with the community makes a big difference in how you experience life. I'm really grateful that I got to meet all the amazing faculty and staff here and those who took a chance on me. It made me feel very comfortable and I was able to do things I would typically not do. You get to know your professors and I think that's something that I love the most. Otterbein has definitely made me a lot more confident in myself. The greatest things about Otterbein is it really gives you that chance to stand out and make a difference. transferred to Otterbein my junior year. The first week was first flight. I met a few friends who were also transfer students and we did the Snyder donut run. I had no idea what it was, but I remember like being like, okay, I want a donut, so I'm doing it. I think my favorite things that I'll take away from college are like being on the team, obviously being on the equestrian team was a huge part of it. I did a bunch of things that like got me involved, so I'm proud of myself in that because I wasn't very involved in high school. It was such a big accomplishment for me to be just recognized on the homecoming court. The reason why I applied was not only for myself, but I also wanted to represent people of color in the court as well. I would like to thank my dear, dear work mom, Kelly Miller. She is someone who has been very supportive and there for me since day one. Melissa Gilbert, she has been there every step of the way and helped me through being a Cardinal Corps leader to just like daily things. Dr. Sin has been supportive to me since my freshman year. I would have to thank Meredith Meyer, Dr. Meyer, my psychology advisor. I um, adore her. She is one of my favorite professors I've ever had. And I really think she's helped me find my path here at Otterbein, but also beyond Otterbein. My parents, 
My parents have been there for me every step of the way, not even my parents, but my family in general. Whoever donated this gorgeous, gorgeous animal, I love him dearly. All the horses that we have here that are owned by Otterbein have been donated, and we can't do this without generosity. I want to say to all the donors that have supported me, thank you so much. I was very um, fortunate to receive the Opportunity Scholarship. I am now able to pursue my my dream of becoming a college counselor in the future. I would say to a donor, thank you for donating to our campus and giving us many opportunities that we've had. And I don't believe I would be where I am today without um, the donations from donors. Thank you for all the donors and like all of what their support also means. And it gives us a lot of opportunities. You belong here. Trust me, there's a place for you here at Otterbein University. I was scared to transfer, but it really was one of the best decisions I've made in my college career. From coming from a small town, I think coming to Westerville has given me uh, the chance to meet people from different backgrounds, which has helped me find new ways of thinking and new ways of understanding the world around me. I just love how close-knit we are, the community here. It feels like there's this own campus vibe, like right when you get on Otterbein. I definitely felt it after I toured here the first time. I'm definitely going to miss my experience here at Otterbein, and I'm truly grateful for the people that I've met because They'll be in my life forever, so I'm, I'm truly grateful for it. It's probably going to be like the best four years, and it really is a shame that it's ending so soon. During COVID, we lost two years, so I think that it ends us. The one thing that every Otterbein student has had in common since 1871 is that they have lived, worked, and taken classes in Towers Hall. When the building was built, it had circular wooden staircases to get from floor to floor. We are told that the children of the janitors who used to live in the basement would frequently climb to the top of the building and slide down the banister. Back in those days, when there was nothing cutting off the wall, there were windows in the stairwells. Here you can see the remains of one of the openings. An interesting story about the staircases. When the fire code required that cement staircases be put in, the bid was put out to local contractors, and there was one local contractor that came back with a bid that was half of what everybody else had offered. They were respectable business. There was no reason to think that they were cheating the university, so obviously that's the one that we went with. It turns out that they only gave us an estimate for one staircase, not the two that were required. However, it was their fault, not ours, and so they made good, and for that reason, we got two staircases for the price of one. Here on the second floor, there's a lot to talk about. To my left here, is the curved wall that is all the remains of the university chapel. It was interesting in the chapel days that what would happen is the freshmen and sophomores would be banished to the upper balcony because the juniors and seniors, being the serious scholars that they were, wanted to be down on the ground level close to the faculty. These days, I think it's safe to say that the seniors would be in the very back of the chapel up against this curved wall. On the other side of the second floor, we have what was the very first library for the university. It was first organized by professor, later president, George Scott, and Tirza Barnes, Otterbein's first official librarian. Books were cataloged under the new Dewey Decimal System and were available to check out during the two to four hours each week that the library was open. Originally, there were separate hours for the men and women to use the library, but by the start of the 20th century, it was a co-educational facility. Coming back to the curved wall, 
This is one of my favorite projects because I can proudly say I had a bit of a hand in it. When Dr. DeVore, our 19th president, was set to retire, we were looking for ways to honor him. And one of the things that we'd always talked about doing was a president's gallery to honor the men who had led this university over the years. So looking at this lovely curved wall, the last remnant of the chapel, it was decided that this would be the perfect place to set up and create the gallery. The text was written by former President Dr. Thomas Jefferson Kerr, based on a program that he did for the Westerville Historical Society several years prior to that. I pulled together a bunch of photographs, and thanks to the wonderful folks in marketing and uh, institutional advancement, we were able to come up with what they called the surfboards to mount everything. You'll notice that these are reminiscent of the windows that you see throughout Towers Hall. A president goes on the wall after they have retired. Dr. Krendel is therefore the most recent one. Dr. Comerford will not go up until after he is retired. On the third floor of Towers Hall, the university gave the four literary societies rooms. That's all they gave them, empty rooms, and said, you can outfit them. At the time of the construction, there were now four of the literary societies, two for the men and two for the ladies. We start down here with the Clyridean room for the ladies, today faculty offices. On the other side, the Philophronian room for the men. This one is today a dance studio. As you walk down the hall, you will notice on both sides large class composites. Back in the days when the school was small enough that you could get the entire university into one frame, it was very common that at the end of the year, everyone's senior photo would go into one of these large composites, and then they would live here in Towers Hall. Finally, at the end of the hallway, we get to the last two rooms. The Philalethian Literary Society for the Ladies here on the right. Again, this is all faculty offices today. And then on the left, the Philomathian Room, the last of the intact literary societies. Let's take a peek and see what it looks like. I hereby call this meeting of the Philomathian Literary Society to order. Of course, if this were a real literary society meeting, I would be woefully underdressed and probably fined about 25 cents, which was a lot of money in the 19th century. On the other hand, as you look around the room and you see the trappings with which they furnished their hall, you have to imagine that uh, it was a pretty lucrative group. The chairs are all original to the early 20th century. The stained glass windows probably predate that into the 19th century. But the overall look of the room was designed by Columbus architect, actually Westerville architect, Frank Packard. The Philomathian Room was used by the literary societies until the 1920s. At that point, really, the fraternities and sororities were killing off the literary societies. After the society closed up, this was used as a classroom and a meeting room. For a long time, it was used as storage. And then finally, in the 1980s, the aforementioned Dr. Harold Hancock, along with a handful of other faculty members, including biology professor Gene Willis, got together, raised funds, and restored the room to its rightful early 20th century look. The room has been used ever since then for special occasions, concerts, classroom work, lectures, and uh, occasionally a historical video. On the left side of the entrance to the Philophronian room, you will notice a janitor's closet. And if you can sneak in the janitor's closet like we have, you will see this old safe. We really don't know much about the history of it. I would assume it went with the, Philomathi or the Philophronian room. But one thing we do know is today, it guards and protects our air conditioning system. Not a lot of folks get to make it up to the very top of Towers Hall into the attic. There's not much to see up here, it is literally just an attic. But that hasn't stopped students over the years from coming up here and leaving their mark. Really the best thing to do when you're up here is go to the back corner and check out the old bell ringing mechanism. That is what controlled the Towers Hall bell for many years. And if you get a chance, check out the south facing, pardon me, the west facing windows. It's one of the best views across the campus. To get to the very top of campus, you'd have to climb this ladder to get up to the cupola on the very top of the Towers Hall roof. 
What do you think, Steve? Want to go up there and get a shot? No. Welcome back. This is Chance Work alongside Kale Dennis. We get ready for the second half of action here. And a great game so far. 39 to 36 our score. And Otterbein actually on top of the number one team in the country. And we've seen kind of ups and downs from the Cardinals. And coming out of the break, a lot of stuff to clean up there at the end of the second half. But it'll be interesting to see how both teams react coming out of the break. Yeah, John Carroll ended the first half on a high note, going on some runs to cut the lead down to three. And I see them continuing to do that into the second half. You can see they're playing loose and relaxed right now. They're not really feeling any threat to Otterbein right now. And what Otterbein needs to do is they need to get clean shots, play aggressive on defense. You know, you've seen it. John Carroll is going to hit some shots. But Otterbein's just going to have to keep their cool, go down the floor, get their shots up, get it down in the post, and work, work a little bit. I think we'll be in for a great second half here in the right center. Yeah, if you're just now tuning in, Otterbein actually had a double-digit lead in the first half. And like Hale said, John Carroll had a hot streak to end the first half. And now just a three-point game. But Otterbein proving they can jump out ahead. You know, if they get the shots to fall and they can show up on defense. So we'll see if they can recreate what they had in the first half. And starting off, Scouting shot's going to be no good. Rebounded by Garrido, and Garrido is going to clean it up for his teammate. Yeah, that's great right there for Otterbein to start off hot down low, get an offensive rebound, showing their aggressiveness early on here in the second half. Now here's Higgins over to Ciccone. Or Ciccone, excuse me. And now Higgins for three, and his shot is good. And a two-point game now as Evans gonna bring it up here for the Cardinals. And Evans had a good start to this game. Kinda slowed down at the end of the first half and looks like Clement's gonna be called on an offensive foul there. And a costly empty possession for Otterbein. Yeah, Clement just using a little bit of the arm bar right there and good acting job right there from Higgins, and it ends up in the offensive foul. I like how you say acting there. Won an Oscar for that one, He Kale. did. I mean, but hey, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Not saying it was a bad thing to do. I mean, if it works, go right ahead. Now Garrido picks up the loose ball, and now Clement, guarded by two, finds Evans in the corner. And Evans backs in, spin move, and gets the shot to fall, Cam Evans. Starting off the second hot half with a made shot. Yeah, one of the better post-playing guards in the conference. Just really has a great array of moves to use to find a great high percentage shot. Yeah, not that big of a body either, but seems to be a trend getting points inside the paint for Cam Evans as John Carroll Missed shot, going to go out of bounds, and Otterbein going to take back over with a four-point lead. Yeah, these empty pos empty possessions from John Carroll are, are going to be huge for Otterbein, making sure if they miss the first shot to get the rebound so, they don't, so they're not able to get any second-chance points. A big reason they were able to have the double-digit lead in the first half is taking advantage of the empty possessions. And... Scoring here will be doing the exact same thing. And Heckman, hand in his face, doesn't matter. And a corner three for Heckman. He had the entire kitchen sink up there in his face. Like you said, it don't matter. It going in. And on the other end, Frazier saying, I can do it too. Yeah. I, another, another hand in his face. He's smothered right there. And he just continues to make impressive shots. And he's a true baller. And now Otterbein going to try to answer back. And Scouten going to be called on the offensive foul. And two quick fouls here for Otterbein. Going to try to stay away from the bonus as long as he can. 
Eliminate giving John Carroll free, free shots as Chacon has it on the corner. And now Higgins finds Frazier on the wing. And good ball mover here by John Carroll. And now to the short corner, out to Chacon. And a step back three is going to be short, no good. And rebound goes to Clement. And Clement going to be picked off but caught out of bounds there by Higgins. And I think the wall might be tearing up there after that hard yeah, hit. Yeah, I think the wall was in more pain than Higgins was right there. Thank you, Otterbein, for the padding. And a pass inside from Heckman. Going to result in two free throw shots here for Evans. A chance to extend their five-point lead. And the first shot is good. And Evans having a pretty solid game so far. As he goes two for two there at the line. And our score now 48-41 with 16-40 left to go in this game. And Chacon going to try to answer back here for the blue streaks. And now Frazier driving in, finds his man in the short corner. And Luca Eller once again. And it seems like that's the spot. Yeah, great on the mid-range game right there, especially by all the blue streaks on the court right now. They all have their own little midi pull-up game that they just love and more often than not, they're gonna hit it. Now here's Evans, and now Clement gonna split two defenders and finds Heckman, and Heckman a hand in his face, and this time gonna be no good as it rolls out of bounds. And Heckman never shies from a contest. No, and just a great pass by Clement too, using his speed to collapse the defense, but unfortunately there, I mean, Chichone just using his speed, gets back to the ball. And good rebound there by Garrido on the missed shot. Now here's Evans on the other end and gets his defender in the air and gets the layup to go. And Cam Evans on a 6-0 run by himself. And Otterbein lead now to seven. And now here's Frazier, very contested shot, and he gets the shooter's roll. Good defense by Clement, but this time offense getting better at the defense. Yeah, if you're, if you're an Otterbein fan, player, and coach, you always got to hold your breath when he's throwing up shots like that because he's going to be, he's going to make them. I mean, like, he is one of the best shot creators in the OAC. And I mean, he's displaying it on the floor tonight. And Alex Hanna checking in for Troy Scouten here for Otterbein as Clement, or excuse me, Evans now inbounding here on the near side for the Cardinals. And now Garrido over to Heckman, trying to find Evans. And now they do, Evans on a bit of a Hot streak here, but this time gonna have a shot sent back. And three on the shot clock, gotta get a shot off and he's gonna be stripped. Excellent defense there by Frazier, getting it done on both sides of the court. And now driving in on this end and his floater is gonna be no good, pulled down by his teammate. And now a foul gonna be called. And that's Will Yontek that's gonna be Heading to the line for two after a great offensive rebound. I mean, Frazier's defense is on full display. I mean, offensive side and defensive side of the ball, he's just been great for the Blue Streets. And he makes it up. I mean, he goes on the floor, misses it, but they get the offensive rebound uh, to get some, to possibly get some few points as a charity strike. Yontek gets his first shot to fall as Krieger and MJ Davis checks in for Otterbein. 
and Evans taking a breather. So Otterbein will have to depend on somebody new here on this next offensive possession. And here's Clement bringing it up for the Cardinals. Yeah, don't expect most of the Otterbein starters, starters to stay out for long. Just getting a quick breather in. Clement almost gets a tough shot to fall. And another foul here for Otterbein. Be their fourth team foul. And this one gonna be called on Heckman. And the crowd seems unhappy with something. Yeah, Not I don't sure know. what it is. I don't know what's going on. The student section is chirping down there. And it looks like another foul is gonna be called. And this this one's gonna be on Jared Krieger. It'll be his second of the game. And Otterbein with 14-10 left to play, now just two fouls away from the bonus. Yeah, I mean, you always wanna be aggressive playing, especially against this team, but holding holding back a little bit wouldn't hurt him here especially since John Carroll is a great free throw shooting team across the board at 72%. Here's Chacon and he gets the fadeaway jumper to fall. And now a one point game as Otterbein a crucial offensive possession here. And Heckman trying to split a defender, almost loses it. And now finds Garrido, Garrido inside to Davis. And they're gonna call it travel and an empty possession for the Cardinals. And John Carroll has a chance to take their first lead of this game. Yeah, and, and that's surprising to say in itself, too. I mean, it's a great job by Otterbein for holding this lead throughout the entire game. Now they gotta play even harder this time around. And Clement, Going to be called for the team's sixth foul there. And now just one away from the bonus. That'll be his second of the game for Clement. And although Otterbein's up, it's almost advantage John Carroll here in the yeah, foul count. I mean, it feels like John Carroll's up by 10 right now with how they're playing. Now here's an open three. Going to be no good. Rebound Clement. And a much needed empty possession for Otterbein. And now got to take advantage and Clement is lost basically every defender and finishes over one at the rim. And now Chacon using the speed and that'll be Otterbein's seventh foul. So John Carroll now in the bonus. Yeah, expect a slower game from here on out, unless they start missing some free throws, but this is not the situation Otterbein won and coming out of the half. And I mean, especially with John Carroll, like I said before, I mean, great free throw shooting team all around. And Chacon, a rare miss there. The announcer's curse still lives on here in the booth at the Reich Center. I'm happy to know that it works for other teams as well as yeah, ours. It usually just works for us. And Chacon, one for two at the line, makes this a two point game. And now John Carroll coming with the pressure as Heckman ready to bring it down for the Cardinals. And Heckman gets past his defender. Gonna pass up a semi open shot there. And now Evans with the ball as he finds Scouten inside. Scouten, reverse layup, and he gets it to fall. And Troy Scouten, an and one, and it couldn't have came at a better time. I mean, it looked like at first the ref was gonna call a travel, which is what I thought initially they were gonna call, but just the sweet spin to the up and under reverse layup, beautiful. And much needed points for Otterbein right there. 
off of the John Carroll attacks as of late. And Scouten completes the three-point play. And I like how you described it. It sounded like a video game combo. Spin move right. Left. A -A reverse. A -A, whatever that is. I forget what the game is from. And Frazier this time going to be no good. And Cam Evans slowing it down here for Otterbein. Who would love to extend their lead at this point in the game. And a foul underneath on Yontek will be the Blue Streaks' fourth team foul of the game as they inch closer and closer to the bonus. And now a timeout going to be called. And why both teams talk it over, we're going to take a break here. Home of the Cardinals on BoxCast TV. Welcome back. This is Chance Burke alongside Kale Dent as both teams getting ready to exit their timeouts. And 55-50 our score, and Otterbein seems to have the momentum as of late, even though John Carroll just entered the bonus. Yeah, Otterbein, it just seems like they're hanging on by a thread right now. John Carroll is a ticking time bomb, just ready to explode at any minute. I mean, John Carroll can go on these runs, but Otterbein is just going to have to fight back and claw back into this one. Even though Otterbein's up by five, it seems like they're down by ten with uh, how explosive John Carroll can be on the floor. Yeah, it's been an odd game all the way around. But Otterbein clinging on to a five-point lead here. 12-19 left to play in this game. And it looks like another foul is going to be called on John Carroll as Otterbein continues to inch closer to the bonus themselves. And that would mean so much for Otterbein getting those free shots and being able to take away John Carroll's advantage here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some drives here and try to draw some fouls. Yeah, I mean, we were talking so much about it, how it's crucial for Otterbein not being the bonus. Now John Carroll as well. Now here's Chacon as he drives in, guarded by Heckman. And Heckman going to send it back. And now here's Evans up to Waits. And Waits' layup is going to be good. And my goodness. It's like he absorbed the ball. <laughs> it looked like it was going to be a jump ball for a quick second. How long it stood in the air between the two people's hands. And now here's Frazier, another missed shot, but rebound underneath, going to be blocked. And like you always say, it's a block party down there. And it's right in front of the Sunit section, and they're loving it. Back to back, isn't that huge? And you see down there, they're getting into them right now. And not sure what is happening. Maybe a bench warning for John Carroll. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened either. And now spin move by Chacon and a fadeaway jumper. Going to be rebounded underneath by Hannah. And now Waits bringing it up for the Cardinals. Now here's Scouten. And Scouten underneath, looking for the ball, gets it. And team foul number six for the Blue Streaks. Now just one away from the bonus. Yeah, I mean, we not even like five minutes ago, we're talking about how crucial it was for John Carroll to go into the bonus. But now, I mean, 
it just came back to bite him in the butt here as Otterbein one foul away. And Waits almost loses it. Gets it back and now here's Evans, top of the key. And gonna hand it off to Heckman. And now Heckman gonna pull up for three. Gonna be hard. Rebound goes to Frazier. And now Frazier bringing it up on the offensive side. And now inside for Gentry as he's trying to back up Scouting. And his spin move's gonna work here, making this a five-point game once again with 10.30 left to go in this game. Yeah, that was great defense down low by Scouting, but I mean, just better offense. Trying to work on the array of moves didn't work, but I mean, just got the little baby hook to go. And a good move by Evans, gonna create an open shot. Gonna be no good this time. And Scouting gonna be called on a foul. And it's gonna result in some free throws on the other end. That'll be Troy Scouting's second foul of the game. And Frazier gonna be the shooter on the other end. And one of the last players you want to send to the free throw line here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's shooting a blistering 81% from the free throw line. Just a pure shooter all the way around. And he gets the first one to go there. Apparently, he's good enough of a shooter to kill the curse as he knocks down the first one. Yeah, I thought it would work there. I really did. I, I, I thought we would get him, but we didn't. He heard us up in the booth. And a perfect two for two there for Frazier. And now back to a one possession game. And finds Heckman. And Heckman back to Clement. And John Carroll keeping up a little semi pressure as Clement going to be stopped and finds Heckman outside. And now Heckman driving in on his defender. Going to find Garrido, and Garrido's three is going to be no good. Rebounded by Frazier. And now a chance to tie. But an empty possession going to be with his results. And Clement back on the other end. His three is going to be no good. There's a lot of misses flying through the air for both teams. Yeah, not the shot selection, I think, in my opinion, you would want right there. Try to set up the offense first before shooting something. And now outside, John Carroll ties it up with a three-pointer. And you can see their bench. Seems like they're just now entering the game. But Cam Evans going to head to the free throw line as Otterbein enters the bonus. That's major right there. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a bang out from Frazier that ends up for two at the free throw line, which is huge. And Cam Evans has been pretty good from there this game. Please, I hope I didn't do anything saying that. And Cam Evans' first shot is good. And Evans breaking the curse. Had Kale sweating up here in the booth. I don't think it should be, even be a curse anymore unless he misses it right here. And Evans, a perfect two for two there. And puts him back up by two and now in the bonus. And it was such a big play that John Carroll's bench immediately left the game after entering. Yeah, we'll see after this possession if they make one, if they're going to get rowdy again. And a foul going to be the result of this possession as Luca Eller going to head to the line for two. And we'll see if the student section tries any tricks there. And the first one is going to fall here.
And the second attempt here is also going to fall. So tying this game back up at 59. And Clement going to inbound here with a lot of pressure by John Carroll. Yeah, I mean, this full press that they have going on, you know, not creating many steals, but, you know, just slowing down this Otterbein offense. But, you know, I think it works in Otterbein's favor. It's just trying to get things set up. And, ooh. And uh, maybe Jack thought he was Derrick Henry there. <laughs> Looked like he ran over his defender, but going to call the foul on John Carroll there. And Clement's going to head to the line for two. And just running him, running him over, I mean, not the right sport, but I mean, got the right idea. I mean, got it to, got him to the line right there. Whatever works, right? Yeah, I mean, in such a tightly contested game, you do some things for the win. That moves O'Toole up to three fouls in the game as Clement knocks down his first. And like you said earlier. Game probably going to slow down for the most part with both teams now in the bonus. As Clement goes perfect two for two there at the charity stripe. And again, propels Otterbein out to two ahead. Got to stop John Carroll here. And that's the way to do it. Frazier's shot going to be no good. And now Evans bringing it up for Otterbein. And a good chance to take advantage of the empty possession and create some momentum for yourself going into this final eight minutes of this game. Now here's Scouting backing up his defender, and his shot's going to be no good. And that's good defense there by Rayner. And now Chacon back on the other end looks inside for Rayner, and Rayner. Going to go back up against Scouting. And his shot going to be no good. So the big men with back-to-back -back misses. And now here's Clement. Finds an open Garrido. And Garrido's three again going to be no good. And neither team able to get anything going on offense. As Rayner... Makes me regret saying that uh, with a layup he there. He wanted that one right there. He was about to bring the house down with that. Woo. And now tie game, seven minutes remaining. And Clement with the ball on the far wing. And now going to find Evans. Evans has had a good game so far. And he's going to drive in. Nothing going. Good defense by Frazier. And Evans... Now using the left on the right side. And a timeout going to be called as Otterbein goes up too. Yeah, I mean, right there, you see Frazier all game has just had electric defense, getting two, three blocks here and there down on the defensive end. I mean, Evans just working his way around him, trying to feel it out. He goes in with the smooth left hand on the right side and gets the great basket to go. And a little back and forth here for both teams. And I think this is how I expect it to go from here on out in the second half. Yeah, it seems like neither team can fully grasp the momentum. And both teams, a lot to talk about here. 6.44 left to play. And like you said, it's been a back and forth affair during the second half. And really, what you expect, Otterbein's been hot during the second half of this season, and John Carroll being the number one team in the country. You know, coming into this game, I know a lot of Otterbein fans had realistic goals of getting the upset, and Otterbein's came out and proved it today. You know, maybe they are better than everyone thinks they are. Yeah, I mean, they have just been unbelievable at home court. Like I said, in this past month, I mean, even this year, the calendar year, they have been really good. I mean, they've been showing out in this game. I mean, you got to finish what you started. That's what they have to do right here. Coming out of this timeout, crucial timeout, too. It'll be 
blue streak possession coming out of this timeout. As the Cardinals have their starting lineup with Hannah substituted for Scouting. As they get ready to try and pull off this upset as Evans saves it for Otterbein. And now Clement back the other way, finds Hannah. Hannah gets his defender in the air. Now an open corner three for Heckman, and it's good. The crowd roars and the right center is bouncing. Julian Heckman from the corner. I mean, I love the unselfishness unself from Hannah right there. Passing the ball out for an open three. Twos are good, but threes are better. What a huge momentum boost for Otterbein right there. Now got to come up here on defense as Frazier's floater is going to be short. Now back out. And this jumper also going to be short. And Frazier again unable to get it to go. And the student section feeling it as Otterbein's defense comes up clutch there. And up five with a good chance to extend it here. Yeah, Frazier has missed some of those freebies he's had. And right there, Otterbein just playing lights out right now out of the timeout. And Garrido there with the layup off the assist by Heckman, and that's what he's been doing all game, dotting up his teammates and gets another one there. But Chacon answers back with a three on the other end. And John Carroll always finding a way to answer back. I mean, they're just going to come back. I mean, they're not going to go away, that's for sure. Now here's Evans. Evans, no foul going to be called. And now a foul on Otterbein. Looks like they're going to call it on Heckman. And Chacon going to head to the line for two. Yeah, I mean, crucial run right there by Otterbein. And I mean, it started with that three from Heckman in the corner. That really just started it all, just crucial momentum building three to go up by seven. And Chacon misses. We didn't even need the curse that time, did we? I was about to say, didn't even have to curse him. Missing yeah. the first shot. It just came to us. It cleans it up on the second. One for two there at the line. And now Evans. Going to get it over to Heckman. And now Heckman bringing it up for the Cardinals. Now here's Evans into Clement. And Clement's jumper going to be no good. Would have been huge if it fell. Now got to come back and get a stop here on the other end. And Chacon finds his teammate underneath. That's Gentry. And Chacon bringing John Carroll back into this game. And now Otterbein clinging on to just a one-point lead. I mean, it's just a game of runs right now. Otterbein did a great job coming out of the timeout, going up by seven. I mean, six. It's, no, yeah, seven. And now they're only up by one. I mean, they just got to cling on. They got to keep fighting. They can't keep letting John Carroll get on these little runs that they have. I mean, they got to come out of this timeout like they did the last one. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Coming out of the last timeout, went on a little run. But again, giving up a little run in return to the Blue Streaks. And John Carroll's done that all game. Been down up to, I think, 13 was the biggest lead of the game for the Cardinals. And now with just 427 left to go in this game, a one-point lead here for Otterbein. And yeah, I mean, set it all game. Like, just got to keep your composure. You know, go out there, not change anything. You got playing great. I mean, just hit a couple easy shots here and there. Like, Clement on that one. Missed his bread and butter elbow pull-up jumper. You know, things are going to happen like that. You just got to stay, get a shot, stay calm, cool, and collected, baby. The three C's. And John Carroll ready to get this game underway. Here is Otterbein 
ready to take back over here. Up one, 427 left to go. And both teams in the bonus. And we've seen free throws playing crucial roles here so far in this game and likely will for these last four and a half minutes. Yeah, both teams shooting lights out from the charity stripe here today, which is in part to why as this game is so close. Now here's Heckman in the corner, gets it inside. And now here's Clement for three in the corner, gonna be no good. Rebound goes to Hannah. A very important offensive rebound. And Otterbein gonna take back over. Ref said last touch by the Blue Streaks. And now a third chance here to score on this possession. As Hannah has it. And now inside to Clement. And Clement's shot gonna be good this time. Third time's a charm, baby. Third time's a charm, and like you said, his bread and butter taking us to Texas Roadhouse. Oh, cinnamon butter. That's even better. We upgraded, man. That's an upcharge. And now inside, Gentry trying to back out Hannah. And nine on the shot clock. Scouting, Garden Frazier, now Heckman on Chacon. And good defense, and they're going to call a foul. And a big, big foul there by Heckman. Shot clock winding down, and now Chacon's going to have a chance at two. The Blue Streaks are winning Oscars left and right here tonight. I don't know about that one. Looked a little funky. I don't even know if Heckman even got him on the arm or anything. Yeah, high IQ play there from Chacon, doing whatever it takes to get the foul call. And he gets the first one to fall, making this again a two-point deficit for John Carroll. And Garrido checking in for Hannah. And now the Twin Towers, they like to call him down low, Garrido and Scouting in for Otterbein. So may they, see him go inside more with the height. Yeah, I mean, they've just been great all season, especially when they did put in the two-man big game. And especially against this seasoned John Carroll two-man game down low. And Evans staying hot from behind the arc. Just cut me off, Cam Evans. Just do it, man. Lights, Cam, action. Coming up clutch. And student section wanted to travel, didn't get it. And now, again, a two-possession game as the back-and-forth action continues. And now here's Heckman, guarded by Chacon. And Winters going to call a timeout. He looks unhappy. And I don't blame him. I thought it was a travel, too. Yeah, it, it looked like it down there. But, I mean, like we say every game, we aren't on the floor. We ain't, we're not calling anything, but... We just, we just got to give our opinion, you know. We don't want to get fined. No, we do not want to get fined. I know that's a big thing in the NBA. We are just, we are students of the game. Students, and students of the game. in general. And the refs are the teachers. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> students and teachers of the game. And both teams talking it over in their huddles right now. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. And Otterbein. Hanging on, two point lead, and I, re I mean, momentum is up in the air at this point. Yeah. It's been so back and forth. Mm -hmm. Otterbein, they, ha they do have the number one, it's the number one defense versus the number one offense. You know? uh, John Carroll averages 86 a game. Otterbein gives up 68 a game. And so, I mean, both teams, I mean, this is like the middle of the road right here. Both teams have done a great job. Otterbein, especially with their defense, slowing them down. But John Carroll even, you know, getting their shots up with their high-powered offense. This is exactly what you wanted in a game like this. Yeah, both teams have very successful offenses and defenses. And they've more than clashed today. And really, 
one of the best games of this season here in the OAC. And a thrilling two and a half minutes left to go as Cam Evans has it at the top of the key and now finds Scouten. And Evans gonna drive in and his shot gonna be no good. Thought it looked good, but doesn't get it to fall there. And now here's Chacon. He's had a great game so far and he's been the biggest scoring threat for John Carroll. And now a wide open Frazier, gonna be no good, a rare miss was wide open. That is unbelievable. I mean, it's like it's like going into the cookie jar. It's wide open. It's right in front of you. Man, that's a huge miss for John Carroll right there. And now here's Clement, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul. And Otterbein not liking it. And Erase the missed shot. John Carroll gets to take back over without Otterbein even getting a chance to extend their lead. And now Chacon driving in, double teams, finds Higgins, and Higgins' shot gonna be no good. And they're gonna say a foul underneath. And Otterbein gonna have some free throws on the other end. The freshman throwing bodies around down there, fighting for positioning, and it works out in his favor. And like I said, the freshman, even <laughs> the two, some of the biggest free throws of his career right here against the number one team. And I mean, this is only like, what, his 23rd career game? I mean, and the moment doesn't get bigger than this. And his first three throw is gonna, Bounce in. Talk about a shooter's role. Yeah, shooter for sure. The freshman has been a great asset shooting the ball for Otterbein all season. Comes up with a clutch free throw there. Now a chance to make this a two possession game. And he does. Timeout gonna be called. A minute and 23 seconds left to play in a four point lead for Otterbein. And what a game it has been. What massive free throws right there to go up two possessions. I mean, obviously, this game is not over by any means, but a two possession game is huge going into these last minute 23 seconds. Now, Otterbein, all you got to do right now is. You gotta hold on for dear life right now. You gotta lock up more than you've ever had in this season, in these final possessions. Yeah, crucial last minute, 23 seconds left here. And John Carroll has had some runs of their own. So like you said, game is definitely not over. But really, I think one big play away from sealing this game just got to find the dagger. Yeah, you got to find it somewhere. And I don't think it's going to come later until the last seconds. But man, wouldn't the house be brought down if something were to happen? Ugh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to say anything. I mean, this is all too much right now. This is too much for our young careers. Can you go, can I'm you excited. Like I'm this? shaking in the booth. Ugh. I'll put my hand out right now, and I'm shaking. And. Both teams here exiting the timeout. It'll be blue streak possession. Down by four with a minute and 23 seconds left to go in this game. And here we go. Chacon with the ball. Student section getting into it. And Chacon, contested three, going to be no good. Offensive rebound underneath. And Yontek, a much needed basket off the miss from Chacon. And a two point game here as John Carroll calls another timeout. They've done a great job all, all game 
of boxing out, getting those tough rebounds. Right there, you just can't get lackadaisical. You can't lose, lose sight of your man. And right there, that might just come back to haunt him with a minute left. I mean, you gotta run down this shot clock in hopes of getting a good shot off at any time of this shot clock. Yeah, oh, what, a, what a play by Will Yontek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting the missed air ball by uh, Luke Chacon there. And he's had a lot of big moments in this game coming off the bench. And his biggest moment right there, making this a two-point game with a minute and seven left to go. And the Blue Streaks keeping up their pressure as Evans going to get it in. And Evans, scary pass. And Heckman going to pass up an open three. And now under a minute as Heckman going to have it on the wing inside to Clement. And now here's Clement guarded by Frazier. Tough shot. And he gets it to fall. Jack Clement. Once again, coming up big for the Cardinals with a fadeaway jumper right there. Big time play players make big time plays, baby. That's what it's about. And Chacon drawing another foul here on the other end. Once again, breathing some life back into John Carroll. And two shots here one of the best shooters on John Carroll. Yeah, not the guy you want at the line, obviously. And the first one, he had to make it interesting. Bouncing around, finally falls. Back to a one possession game, 77 to 74. And now here's Chacon's second free throw. And it is no good, but he gets his a loose ball, thought he got his own offensive rebound. Evans gonna come out with it. Would have been the biggest play of the game if you would have got the rebound. And Clement making a wise decision, calling the timeout. And oh my gosh, that was close. And you're holding your breath there, weren't you? I, I think we both were the entire, the, the air was out in the right center right there. Right? Ball on the ground, it looked like he came up with it. But a little scramble for it and, it, and it just popped out. Oh man, I mean, what do you do here if you're John Carroll? I Personally, I would start to foul. You can't let it get down. Uh, one possession game, you're up by three points. You can't let it down. Who do you foul get, though on yeah, Otterbein? No, no, man, it's, They're all you, good shooters. If you foul, I mean, Otterbein's been great at the free throw line. If you start to foul, you make like you make two free throws, you go down, get a quick bucket, and hopefully you get a steal. But yeah, I can see them going either way here with draining the shot clock or fouling. Yeah, 6.6 .6 seconds separating the shot and game clock, so would have enough time for a last second shot if they do force a shot clock violation. Like you said, don't don't know if John Carroll wants to have to have to throw up a last second prayer in the final seconds. So we'll see what Coach Moran decides to do coming out of this timeout. Yeah, and I mean, if they get the ball with six seconds left, you're either going to get it to Shoshone or Frazier for sure. One of those guys is going to put it up. And it's, it's going to be wild, whatever the outcome is. Gonna be Heckman inbounding on the far side. 26.6 remaining in this game. A scary pass on the far end to Clement, and now double teams. And he's gonna turn it over. Chacon finds Frazier, and Frazier gonna turn it over himself. Heckman comes up with a steal. And what a play by Julian Heckman. He's had a great game all game and comes up with the biggest play. Stealing it in the final seconds. And now the dagger free throws here for Julian Heckman. 
what a crazy sequence of events right there. Look, looked like John Carroll was gonna come back and take all the momentum. But another loose ball picked up by Otterbein, massive. And Heckman's first free throw gonna be no good. A three point game, so if he makes this free throw here, it'll be a two possession game. And he does. So aside from a three point and one, Otterbein up by two possessions here with 13.3 left to go. You can see down there in the corner, Davis is face guarding, or he was face guarding Frazier. They do not want him to shoot, get the ball in any vicinity right now. And they're using Davis to trap here. As here's Chacon, tough shot. Doesn't get it to fall, rebound, Otterbein. And on Valentine's Day, Davis slams it in the final seconds. Otterbein knocks off the number one team in the country. And they're going wild. The cardiac cards do it today on Valentine's Day. Cupid is, is in the building. Love is in the air. What a win for the Cardinals here today. Oh, man, this is awesome. What a game. What a game. And Julian Heckman. Wasn't the biggest on in the scoring category, wasn't the biggest in the rebound category, but came up clutch when the team needed it. And a 78 to 74 victory for Otterbein. And unbelievable win here in this last week of the season. And really couldn't think of anything better going into playoffs. Now, can you dig it? I mean, this is unbelievable, especially for seeding in the OAC tournament. What a massive win for this program. Just came out firing, blistering hot, didn't let up all game. I don't think they even trailed at any point in the game. Just an amazing job by Coach Winters in this team. Yeah, like you said, never trailed in the game and had some ups and downs, but really a solid game for every Cardinal that touched the floor on both sides of the ball. And they snuck out an upset here on Valentine's Day. And like you said, love is in the air and a big time win here for Otterbein. And going into playoffs, I think they clinched the three seed in the OAC with the win here and exactly what you needed. And a great game here. Chance Burke and Kale Dent reporting live, home of the Cardinals on BoxCast TV.